Hello everyone, welcome to episode 21 of Infinity. Um, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird. Um, yeah, I'm having a, I'm starting to feel a bit sick, but uh, nothing too bad. Um, I did, I did a massive cleanup on my computer because I realized that uh, I had a lot of um, unnecessary stuff that I didn't actually need, and also it makes me feel better when I can delete stuff that is, you know, not necessary for my computer. Um, and this is also the second attempt to record this because my recording got lost I don't know why I don't know how it just did so I'm gonna take you through some of the things we can start with Batania first change that up put nine mana pools here um, and I move the alt, uh, runic altar uh, but the, the uh, sorry, the major change is if you look closely, this one has a symbol floating about it. It's an augment. If I shift right click, uh, spark arg augments. There are four of them there's the dispersive, the dominant, the recessive, and isolated. I have made all of them. That's one being here. So these spark, uh, these these augments uh, have different uh, give the spark different abilities. The the most commonly used for me is the recessive and the dominant. I uh, don't use the isolated or dispersive very much, but I'll explain what it is. The dominant spark makes it so that um, the mana pool or what is on, on top of will forcefully drain mana up from uh, all of the sparks it's linked to. So if I put it in the middle, you can see that all the mana is getting drained to this pool. Now it's full. Recessive is um, quite the opposite. If you put it on, it will it will give its mana to every nearby pool. That's why I have it here, so that. This one can send all of its mana to my buffer. The isolated makes it so that uh, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that the isolated makes it so that uh, the recessive or the dominant does not affect it, meaning it's just neutral. It doesn't receive mana, neither does it get drained? And finally, the dispersive uh, is for players. If you walk near it while it has a dispersive um, augment on it, it will deliver mana to you as long as you have something that can, can contain mana, for example, a mana tablet. So there's those. They're not super hard. Why? Oh. Oh, come on. There we go. They're not super hard to make. It is just some mana steel ingots, some pixie dust which you get from a resource from Alpine 
by dropping a mana, mana pearl and one of the elemental runes so rune of water for the dispersive rune of fire for the dominant recess uh, rune of earth for the recessive and rune of air for the dis uh, isolated so there's that now on to the um, actual thing we're going to do I managed to get this I managed to get two enderman heads which I was really lucky about because it took a lot of time to get the first one and then on the second one I got on my first enderman on my way back home I also captured a villager and an enderman So the first thing we're going to make is a soul binder, which is going to require me to get solarium, machine chassis, uh, creeper, zombie skeleton, and enderman head. I have all of the heads, and solarium is pretty easy to make. It is, it is um, a combination of gold and soul sand. So I'm going to make, oh, 16, why not? There we go. While that's cooking, I will make the chassis. Uh, redstone and then four iron bars, four and iron ingots. There you go. Four solarium. And one of each of these heads. Now I did test this and you kinda you need to place them correctly, so creeper head goes there, skeleton beneath, and zombie. I don't know what happened. But yeah, this is the recipe. A soul binder. Place you there because I know you have power underneath. And this is where we define our spawner. So I have a cave spider spawner here, a broken one. I'm going to infuse it with, or I'm going to soul bind it with an enderman. It's going to take me 15 levels. Problem. and go. Oh, this is going to take a while. Yeah. Meantime though, I will prepare for the rest of the stuff. Uh, so I need a power spawner, which is electrical steel, uh, any type of head, machine chassis, two vibrant crystals, and a Z-Logic controller. The Z-Logic controller yeah, it's made in the slice, slice and splice using two solarium, two silicon, redstone, and a zombie head. Uh, yes. The cool thing about the slice and splice when it comes to placing items is that if you shift uh, left click it will place it correctly so zombie heads redstone solarium silicon so, yeah electrical steel comes from iron ingots silicon and pulverized coal so I need four of them Da, da, 
da. Let's get some alloy. Four. And go. Got my C logic controller. Um. Now the vibrant crystals, I believe, is yes, just an emerald surrounded by vibrant alloy nuggets. Uh, already prepared those. Electrical steel is done. Now I just need a more another machine chassis. And um, I, I'm I'm getting fairly tired of making uh, machine chassis or the basic capacitors. I mean I don't mind, but uh, making them so often. Yeah, I mean it's a good way to learn recipes and such but yeah so you go there uh, you go there you go there I need another head I'm going to use um, uh, I'll just use a skeleton health head so now I have a powered spawner even though it is not configured to anything. The other thing I want to make is an attraction obelisk. It is basically a mob magnet. So it requires some energetic, energetic alloy, solarium, a enticing crystal which is in a soul binder by combining a villager with an emerald. This, uh, and and the cost of 10, 10, 10 experience and 100,000 RF. There we go. And let's get you. Broken spawner, Enderman. Cool. And go. Now this does not take so much time at all. Because combining a broken spawner with an emerald or Enderman costs 2.5 million RF. Yeah, way more. Again, gonna need a machine chassis. Two of the energetic and three of the solarium. Thank you. So now I need to combine this with this. This is done in Anvil. And whatever spawner you wanna you wanna combine, it always takes thirty thirty levels. There we go. Now I have a power spawner of an enderman. I already dug out my area. Right here. I also dug out the area where I will do my uh, power. And I just need a few more things. This <clears throat> if you're wondering about this, this is uh, redstone conduits. It's it's Ender IO's redstone basically. 
although much cooler and better. Uh, I thought I had one. Do I have two? Yes. So let's set this up. Uh, now I tested this before because I couldn't get it to work. But it will spawn in a four block radius. So it can. Um, now I only have a three block radius. For reasons I'm not quite sure of myself. Uh, now the, the cabling is going to look really weird. I can tell you that right now. Reason is, I just want this up and running. And then I can focus on making it look pretty later. Also going to have you come out here. Here you're connected. I'll bring you down there, and I need some go away. Now, I'm not going to hook you up yet because I want to configure you. Uh, shift, left click. Um, as you can see, I have I can access both of the conduits because they're in the same block space. So, in out, strong signal, fine. Yeah, nothing more to do there. Uh, you will be there, so... I need to f if press F3 you can see the direction you're facing I would be facing west so west in out strong signal you can place a lever there and you can see it light up this one will be active with signal so if I turn you off this one is not running but it doesn't have power anyway, so it's not running anyway. G going to put the attraction obelisk here. Now this one also need power. I will put you also with activist with signal. And let's do this. If I bring you down, there we are. Now Um, where do I want to put this? Oh, um, disabled. you on there. Up will be in out, strong signal. Need to go down. Just 
Oh, you're not even hooked up yet. There you go. Uh, and now strong signal, fine. Again, it doesn't look pretty, but I just wanted work working. So you're getting power, and so are you now. Cool. So you're active with signal. I put you there. Sorry, sorry, I got so quiet. Anyway, it's a 16 block radius. Now, let's just test this. See if it works. Now, this requires 1600 RF to run. So, it is a lot of power. But if this works, I will be happy. Yes. And I can flick the lever. No? Why? I might need to specify it. Why will you not work for me? That's it. Okay, for me it doesn't matter. Well, eh. It would be nice, but if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. I don't know why. And the reason I'm using the Ender is so that they don't teleport away. Find the bros. Sweet. So that's um, another way of doing it. Now, if I'm going to keep having it, I will need some form of. Is it, I will need uh, some form of better. Uh, power gem because all I have now is four lava generators generating 40 RF per tick which is 40, 80, 80 120, 160 which is you know uh, it's decent or it, it's alright for the machines and stuff that I need because the machines don't run constantly, except for, well, you're full, so, yeah. Uh, but it's this thing that really drains the power. So, if you've forgotten, the reason I wanted Ender Pearls was to make the Ender Quarry. Um, but then again, I need more power gen to be able to run my quarry as well. And I'm also going to need a few other things, which we will start. Yeah, we have some time. We can do it. The reason I love thermal expansion is because they add tesseracts. 
Tesseracts are very, very powerful. Unified point in space time can transfer item fluids and RF. So you can be anywhere in the world, but if you have a tesseract hooked up to your power, for example, I go 5,000 blocks that way, start a new base, and have another tesseract, I can access all of my power from my main power. Same thing with, same thing with items. I can pump items into this and pull it out another where, uh, somewhere else. So you're gonna need two of these. Now, they are a bit expensive. Uh, you can start with the tesseract frame, which is enderium ingots, uh, fused quartz, hardened aluminum glass, or hardened glass, and a diamond. Uh, hardened, uh, blah. blah, blah. Hardened glass, you know, it's just obsidian and lead. Enderium can be made uh, a few a few ways. You can either make enderium blend by combining tin, silver, and shiny, and a resonant ender bucket, which is come, which you know you melt down ender pearls. Get two fifty. You get a quarter of a bucket per pearl. Or you get four buckets per ender lily seed. Uh, and then induction smelted with pyrothium dust, which comes from sulfur or, uh, yeah, sulfur, coal, redstone, and blaze powder to get to endearing ingots. You can make you can do it in an alloy smelter by combining ender pearls, pyrothium dust, and enderium base, which is shiny, silver, tin. So there is no there is no cheaper way of doing it. Like it's still gonna require the same um, um, same resources. Now looking at it, I might get, uh, no, no, never mind, forget what I'm saying. Uh, you can also do it in a, um, in a smeltery, but it's the same thing, so. And then you take your frame, you put it in a fluid transposer with uh, one bucket of resonant ender, you will get the tesseract frame, which is full, and then you combine it with silver and bronze to get your finished tesseract. So I say let's just do it. I'm gonna go the thermal expansion route just for now. So I need two tin, one silver, and one shiny. Two tin, one silver, and one shiny. Yeah, I don't have a. Sh I have. A, I. I don't have a lot of shiny metals, which is why I'm making the tesseract. And which is why I'm making the Ender Quarry. So, a, a lot of, a lot of my plans, like requires a lot of step by step preparation and stuff. But it it doesn't, like in the end, it really really works out. I was gonna need a bucket. Put you in there. Oh, it melts down pretty fast. Could always be faster, but you know, not complaining. So shiny, ender, tin, silver, four endearing blend. Now to make pyrothium, uh, 
blaze powder, uh, sulfur, coal, yes. Sulfur, which I also guess from from pulverizing coal and from pulverizing the blaze power blaze rods. And then induction smelted. In order to get Ethereum. Now it's one per one pyrothium dust per two Ethereum blend. So yeah. Gonna take some hardened glass, which I don't have, of course. Um, I get two from these. Um, pulverize you. Yes, I get two from them. That's good. That's good. Now we need a diamond. Tesseract frame. Uh, two ender pearls. I will need more. You on. And actually, since you're not working, then I don't need you. Clean up later. Yeah. So if I look at my redstone's energy cell, you'll see that the power is quickly dropping. Very very quickly oh my frames are going insane again okay so I have no idea why but after I record for so long, suddenly it just drops. I have no idea why. Bronze can be made using copper, three copper per tin, bronze ingots. Yeah, I said I was gonna fi fix this problem, but as I don't know what the problem is, then yeah, still looking though. But at least I have my first Tesseract. Cool. And now I'm out of time. So. Next time we will make the other Tesseract and we will prepare for making the Ender Quarry. But now thank you for watching and farewell.